Africa has always been a continent of extremes, where predators join forces to wage a war for survival. These killer armies work together to surround, overpower, and take down their victims. When they swarm together, prey doesn't stand a chance against Africa's deadliest. Africa's dramatic landscape provides a backdrop where all animals have to adapt their strategies for survival. Fire and radical seasons wrench landscapes between extremes. Plains that teem with life in one season are scraped bare in the next. Forests cannot survive the drought, and only rains hold the desert at bay. Across two-thirds of Africa, grasslands peppered with trees form a brutal hunting arena. On these vast savannas, the largest and toughest herbivores on Earth have evolved. To take them on, Leagues of the world's deadliest predators have to join forces. Lone assaults on these prey can end in death for the aggressor. Even killers that usually operate alone will enlist an army if the prey is right. This lone hunter lurks in waterways, preying on the desperate that must drink to survive. Nile crocodiles terrorize waterways across the continent. And in one Zambian river, they've amassed into a reptilian fleet. The Luangwa is a rich hunting ground. There are more Nile crocodiles here than in any other river on Earth. They thrive here because this landscape is deadlier than any predator. In the dry season, barely a drop of rain falls for six months. The Luangwa is the last major water source. But many don't make it in time. Parched corpses litter its banks and feed the growing army. On the banks, hunger pangs gnaw at a herd of zebras. The grass is clipped to dust. They must seek better grazing across the river. On land, zebras can kill with a kick. But here in the river, they're out of their safety zone. It's the perfect opportunity for a massacre. Crocodiles deploy like a fleet of living submarines and vanish. Crocs can hold their breath for two hours by excreting carbon dioxide into their guts. Invisible, just below the surface, the deadly armada moves into position. The zebra simply can't see the danger surrounding them.
Once they are in too deep to escape, the crocodiles launch an ambush. Zebras have one advantage. They're warm-blooded, so they're faster and more agile than the cold-blooded reptiles. Crocs need just one clean bite. The jaws clamp down with enough force to lift a pickup truck and pull the zebra under. The croc uses the water to make the kill. Once the prey is dead, the crocodiles must work together to devour it. Their round teeth don't cut, and half-meter jaws can't chew. The only way for the crocs to tear up the carcass is to use each other as leverage. They lock jaws and spin against each other to wrench the carcass into pieces. But when these giants leave the water, they lose their advantage. Their long, flat bodies are clumsy and slow. On dry land, different killers compete for the title of Africa's deadliest. One ranks amongst the most feared predators in the world. Twice the muscle of a heavyweight bodybuilder, yet capable of speeds over 60 kilometers per hour. Lions can kill virtually any large mammal in Africa. Yet even these mighty predators have a nemesis. A prey animal famous for turning the attack. Buffalo. Predation has shaped these wild cows into one of Africa's most aggressive herbivores. The half-ton goliaths are quick to charge and famous for goring enemies with their half-meter horns. When it comes to predators, their best defense is attack. For lion prides to take on these fierce beasts, they need the strength of numbers and a foolproof plan. Today, they have both. This pride has driven their victim into the perfect trap. Stuck in a Luanga waterhole, this buffalo has nowhere left to run. The lions have blocked all exits. The bull can kill with a blur of his horns. The lion can't tackle him head on. Instead, they'll wear him down.
In the water, fear and cold sap the strength the bull needs to defend himself. The lions just need to hold the bank and wait. The adult lionesses conserve their energy. They let the sub-adults taunt the victim. Their expertise will be needed after dark. By nightfall, they've maneuvered the bull out of the waterhole, and he's exhausted. He's weak and bleeding from dozens of small wounds. The lionesses step up for the coup de grace. The young males hold the perimeter to prevent escape. The lionesses taunt the bull to draw his attention, but stay just out of range of his horns. The distraction allows another female to attack from behind. As the bull weakens, the youngsters join the fight. The lioness on top bites into his spine to disable his legs, as the rest target his tendons. Pain and exhaustion win at last. The bull can fight no more. brings the battle to a merciful end. The reward is worth the risk. The bull's giant carcass will feed the pride for a week. Buffalo are one of the lion's primary prey, but hunts aren't always this successful. Numbers are the determining factor between these enemies. When the buffalo have backup, the odds can change dramatically. Some of the largest buffalo herds in Africa roam the Luangwa Valley. Amongst their ranks are hundreds of weak, vulnerable calves. But they are guarded by mothers that will kill to protect them. When threatened, the herd moves in a tight convoy. The adult females hold the front line and look out for danger to protect the weaker animals at the center. To reach the solid wall of angry muscle, lions must risk their lives. If a lion gets cornered by them, it's in deep trouble. The tree offers temporary refuge. Lions are awkward climbers. The herd won't leave until they've seen off this threat.
The lion loses its fight with gravity above a sea of enraged buffalo. The herd shows no mercy. This is a game of survival, and every lion eliminated may be a buffalo saved. But brute strength is not always the best defense. A hundred kilometers south of Luangwa, in the dusty bush of Thule, Botswana, one cast of prey animals have found a less brutal way to stay alive. Antelope traded strength for speed. Their spring-loaded legs allow rapid acceleration up to twice the speed of the fastest Olympian. Here, only the fastest and fittest survive, because this is wild dog country. to the size of lions, but double their speed. These dogs kill fast, brutally, and often. One dog weighs little more than a German shepherd, but they're armed with the most powerful jaws for their size of all mammals. Working together, they're the most efficient killers on the continent. What they lack in size, they make up for in numbers. Packs of over a hundred wild dogs once roamed Africa. Today, they teeter on the brink of extinction. Yet in places like Thule, up to 50 dogs may run together. Pack mates are obsessively affectionate. Constant contact and vocalizations concrete the tight group bond. All of them submit to the authority of two top dogs, an alpha male and female. They determine when, where and what the pack hunts. Wild dogs may roam a home range twice the size of New York City and cover over 30 miles a day in search of prey. Between hunting missions, the dogs play fight to keep their fitness and agility up. Their home base is the den where they hide their cubs, but they're always ready for action. A herd of eland passes dangerously close to the hidden barracks. It's time to move out. These giants are the slowest of all antelope, but that doesn't make them easy prey. They're 10 times the size of a wild dog, and they too can kill with their horns. It could be suicide to tackle the herd head on. Like the lions, the dogs need to weaken their prey, but they won't do it with pain. This will be a battle of endurance. The pack splits into two groups, flankers and chasers. Flankers move ahead to block side escape routes as chasers start to push the herd from behind. There's no stalk. They want the herd to see them and bolt. Flankers channel the fleeing antelope through the bush as the chasers increase the pace until the prey can run no more. Exhaustion drives the eland to stop and face their enemies. 
the pack splits up and isolates victims. Three Eland go down. Each dog latches on with jaws like a bear trap and jerks hard to rip open the skin. Though it looks brutal, shock numbs the pain and death is swift. In a matter of minutes, there's nothing left but bones and a blood stain. Stomach's full, they head home. But this meal isn't over. Each dog's gut literally acts as a doggy bag. At the den, the hunters regurgitate meat and share it among the pups and the adults. They feed more than 30 mouths off a single hunt, but tomorrow they'll do it all over again. Feeding this growing predator militia is a full-time job. This landscape teems with prey, but most of it is too small to make the wild dog's radar. The tiny creatures that crawl the woodland floor are packed with nutrients. But giants like lions and wild dogs would have to eat thousands of them to stay fed. But a predator one-tenth their size evolved to cash in on this hidden stash. Banded mongooses are top of the food chain below the grass line. They live in large, close-knit troops, and like wild dogs, they stick together. But on the hunt, their tactics couldn't be more different. It's every mongoose for itself. Each animal raids the undergrowth for anything that crawls and keeps what it finds to itself. So why do they stick together? At half the weight of a dachshund, mongooses are small predators with a big problem. They're also prey animals. Every predator larger than them is a threat, especially to the bite-sized babies they hide in their dens. Hunting together means there's always a set of eyes scouting the terrain. They're always ready to retreat at the first sign of danger. Not everyone makes it. Ever-present danger has groomed mongooses into nervous, flighty creatures. Yet there are some deadly predators that bring out a side to this troop that borders on the suicidal. Snakes are specialists at invading the narrow dens where mongooses hide their infants. When scouts spot one, they put out a call to arms. The entire troop races to meet the enemy. This Mozambican spitting cobra can kill a human. Its bite packs a potent cytotoxin that dissolves flesh. Yet this is one killer the mongooses will fight. The snake is a deadly threat to their young, but if they defeat it, it doubles as a protein-rich meal. Regular conflict with snakes has armed them for this moment. 
they're virtually immune to cobra venom. Now, the mongoose's teamwork pays off. With so many moving targets, the cobra can't choose who to attack. Biting isn't its only weapon. It can shoot a blinding jet of venom straight to its enemy's eyes. The mongoose's lightning-quick reflexes keep them out of the line of fire. They keep the pressure on until the snake tries to escape and attack when it's on the retreat. With needle-like teeth, they tear the snake apart and devour it. Ten million years ago, one of their ancient relatives abandoned the undergrowth in search of richer pickings on the open plains. Giants roamed the savannas, and when they fell, mountains of meat were left for the taking. Feeding off these carcasses, the mongoose's evolutionary cousins transformed into predatory giants themselves. The spotted hyenas. Though famed as scavengers, these bone-cracking killers had fought their way to the top of the food chain. They're powerful, brutal, and capable of ripping prey open before it even hits the ground. In one landscape, spotted hyenas have even ousted lions as the apex predators. The Maasai Mara. The dens of large hyena clans dot this savanna, but these are no happy families. Hyena society is a dictatorship. The matriarch rules, and the highest-ranking females enforce her will. Rank is inherited at birth and defended till death. The pecking order governs everything. Those with rank breed, hunt and feed first. Those without are forced to fight for scraps against their clanmates. Spotted hyenas are amongst the most brutal to their own kind of all mammals. Clan members bear the scars of battles with their own. Yet this vicious system holds the clan together and grooms its members into some of the toughest hunters in Africa. Hyenas aren't built for speed. Their claws are blunt and they're no good at stealth. Their greatest weapon is cunning. A herd of topian wildebeest are the perfect victims for a deadly scam. The bustle of hundreds of bodies keeps prey distracted. The hunting group spreads out. One by one, hyenas amble straight into the herd. 
they barely give prey a second glance. The act fools the herd into thinking they're just lone hyenas wandering the plain. The topi barely react to the predators infiltrating their ranks. Once the hyenas are in position, they search for soft targets. Topi are fast, agile antelope, but they have one fatal flaw. They need to rest often to digest the coarse grass cut fermenting in their guts. On the ground, they're sitting ducks. The hyena matriarch ambles into close range of a sleeping topi. She has backup nearby. Her dominant females are edging closer. The matriarch drops her disguise and charges. The topi is caught before it even realized there was a threat. The nearest ally drops her guys and races in to help, as the matriarch holds on with vice-like jaws. The second hyena latches on as backup bursts out of hiding. Working together, they tear open the abdomen with sheer force. The rest of the clan are quick to move in for the kill. The big females feed first. Their low-ranking clanmates must content themselves with scraps. Overhead, an audience has amassed. One of the most ominous spectacles in Africa. Towers of spiraling silhouettes are the calling card of Africa's predators. Wherever they kill, the giant birds follow to clean up the leftovers before they fester and spread disease through the landscape. On a continent with more large predators than anywhere else on Earth, carnage is a daily occurrence. Without this legion of undertakers, the savannas would look like battlegrounds littered with thousands of decaying bodies. Water would run foul, epidemics would break out, and ecosystems would crumble. By disposing of the dead, vultures helped to hold Africa's ecosystems balanced on a knife edge. Beyond the mainland, life is governed by different rules. Temperature is the catalyst that shapes these oceans. To the west, the Agulhas Current brings icy waters from the Arctic. To the east, the warm Benguela Current carries tepid waters from the tropics. At the southern tip of Africa, they collide. This stretch of ocean is called the Agulhas Bank. The clash of temperatures creates massive upwellings of nutrients. It's the perfect spawning ground for enormous shoals of sardines. To protect themselves from predators, these remarkable fish band together in their thousands, 
yet they move like one giant organism. It's hard for predators to lock onto a target amidst the shimmering mass. But one hunter has learned to turn the sardine's defenses against them. The common dolphin are the masters of the bait ball. These high-speed marine mammals patrol this stretch of coast in small armies. Pods up to a thousand strong cruise at more than 30 kilometers per hour as they search for prey. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack. There may be only one sardine shoal in more than 200 million gallons of ocean. By banding together, the dolphins pool their sensors to scan kilometers of ocean at a time. They have excellent eyesight and hearing, but they also have a sixth sense, sonar. Dolphins emit low-frequency sounds that bounce back off the shoal and allow them to pinpoint fish even in low visibility. Once they lock onto a shoal, they work together to herd it into a dense mass. The tighter the fish are packed, the easier they are to catch. But keeping them in formation takes teamwork. Half the pod circles the shoal to herd it tighter and tighter, while the other half bolts through the throng, snatching up fish. Mid-battle, they switch roles so that everyone gets to feed. With this strategy, each dolphin eats half its body weight in a week. When winter sets in, everything changes in this stretch of sea. A band of cold water spreads up Africa's warm east coast and expands the bank's unique habitat. Billions of sardines merge into a supersized shoal and migrate up the cold channel as nutrients well up from the ocean floor. Pressed against South Africa's narrow coastal shelf, this highway of fish can stretch like a shadow for 15 kilometers. This is the Sardine Run, the most epic marine migration in the Southern Ocean. It is estimated that the sheer biomass of fish rivals the great wildebeest migration of the Serengeti. The hordes of sardines are packed so densely that they blot out the light. Back on the Agullis bank, the dolphins prepare for a siege. Pod by pod, they abandon their home and head north up the coast towards the feast. One by one, pods join forces and merge into a fleet of dolphins up to 5,000 strong. They march up the coast in a front a kilometre wide, searching for the first sign of the sardine run.
the instant the common dolphins hit the sardine super shoal, the entire army descends. The giant band of fish keeps surging onward up the coast. If the dolphins hunt on the main shoal, they have to constantly chase its tail. But they have a smarter strategy. Hundreds of dolphins at a time join forces to break giant bait balls off the moving bank of fish. Circling together, they bring the fish to a halt and herd them into tight masses up to three stories tall. With the monstrous bait balls under their control, they gorge themselves. But there is a downside to the dolphin's military efficiency. It can be abused. Sharks are experts at sniffing out an opportunity. Many species can smell a teaspoon of blood in 10,000 litres of seawater. Over 400 million years of evolution has honed them into the ocean's deadliest guild of predators. Ranks of black tips, duskies, bronze whalers and bull sharks home in on the scent of shredded sardines. The cold-blooded sharks are not as agile as the common dolphins. When they hunt on the open shoal, it simply morphs around them, just out of reach. It's much easier to muscle in on the dolphin's captive bait balls. The dolphins have no choice but to share. Large sharks are amongst their few natural enemies. They're unlikely to hunt the dolphins, but a bite could prove fatal. The pillaging sharks send the dolphins' order into chaos. But the more the fish spread out, the harder they are to catch. So the sharks push them against a wall they can't escape from. The surface. The water boils with sharks and fish, which opens up the battle to another line of attack. Gannets are the ocean's air force. Squadrons of birds rain down on the bait ball like missiles from 30 meters in the air. They hit the water at a bone crushing 100 kilometers per hour. At that speed, most animals would be dead on impact. But the gannets are built for this. Their bodies are perfectly streamlined to minimize resistance. And they have sacs in their necks that work like airbags to absorb the blow. But what tips the scales between life and death is high precision flying. The birds dive into a soup of bodies, yet they rarely hit the other predators. Even though their wingspan is as wide as a car and they literally require a runway for takeoff, they fly with uncanny control. Their specialized eyes pinpoint a target below the surface from three stories up. 
and they shoot down between the sharks and dolphins with perfect accuracy to snatch it. If they miss their prey on impact, they use their waterproof wings like paddles to swim it down at depths of more than 15 meters. Their beaks are watertight and they can hold their breath for more than 30 seconds. But even down here, the greatest danger is head-on collision. There are literally hundreds of predators competing for the feast. Yet the birds negotiate the throngs of sharks and dolphins with incredible underwater agility. The three hunting armies reduce the massive bait balls to a handful of fish in a matter of hours. As they feast, more predators pour in until hundreds of them cram together. Yet attacks between them are rare. It is one of the most extraordinary predation spectacles on Earth. When they attack as a group, they reveal the true, devastating efficiency of Africa's deadliest.